So if you're a new breeder and you're buying your frozen thawed rodents, but you know, sometimes your males just aren't trying to eat. It seems like they're the hardest ones. They won't eat. Hey, I think I got some tips that can help you. So stick around and find out more about how to get them to eat more of the food. I mean, they need to eat, right? Ooh, these brothers, my guys, know that they fly, know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my side, CJ Ack, now I'm gonna roll with ice. Ooh, these brothers, my guys, know that they fly, know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my side, CJ Ack, now I'm gonna roll with ice. Hey, how's it going, guys? It's Paul with Spheric Reptiles, and thank you so much for tuning in today on why your snake, particularly the males, just stop eating during the seasonal change or during breeding season. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a returning watcher or subscriber, even better, um, I thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully, I'm bringing you some content that is actually useful to you. Um, I'm going through this walk as a new breeder, and I just want to share everything that I'm going through from a business perspective, a uh, scientific perspective, and more importantly, for an uh, animal husbandry perspective. And along the way, I'm sharing with you some of the things that I'm running into that there isn't a lot of information out there for. In some previous videos, um, I re referenced textbooks that are medical textbooks for veterinarians. And I feel like that's useful as well as I do have some mentors that have been in the game for at least five years or more in a lot of cases, and they give me great advice. But at the end of the day, when you're there with your ball pythons and you're a new breeder, you really don't have anybody else to turn to. More than likely, you are the expert in your family. Everybody else is kind of like, well, I don't really know anything or I don't want to get close to them, right? Um, unfortunately, that's the case. But if you're watching this video, you're interested in why your male ball python will stop eating, right? Um, in the intro leading up to this, I showed you a frozen thawed um, bag that we just got from Lane Labs. I have to vacuum seal those so that we can make sure that they stay fresh. So why do they stop eating? I think that's the question. So that's a very important question. And hopefully in this video, I'll share with you some reasons as to why they stop feeding and some possible solutions that maybe you can use and put into practice as to how you can prevent them from stopping the eating or at least reduce that amount of time that they go on this, this um, anorexic type of a fast, right? So I did a little bit of research and what I found out because I'm having that issue this season, whereas I didn't have it last season, is that these ball pythons go on the fast to where they just don't wanna eat because of hormonal changes. Now this is a little bit of this is seasonal. So as it gets cooler outside or it starts raining, the rainy season, the females kind of start all of this. They're, they're the troublemakers. So the females release pheromones. Yeah, I said it right, pheromones, like, like perfume that drives you crazy, right? And that makes these male ball pythons increase their testosterone production. So this testosterone production is, has nothing to do with food for these guys. Because you remember ball pythons live in these small little holes or burrows of other animals under dead logs or in bushes, somewhere where they cannot be predated upon or killed. And so when these females start releasing these pheromones, this little magical scent in the air, these male ball pythons pick that up. It triggers their bodies to produce more testosterone so that they can reproduce, right? All animals want to reproduce, right? Even us. So that makes them go from thinking about food to just thinking about sex. And so they spend all their time traveling distances, putting themselves at risk to be killed or to not even make it or to meet, get there and find another male ball python that's bigger than them or quicker than them or something already doing the job, right? So that's the focus. And that's why they go off of food because it switches everything that they have towards just reproducing. And I think that's very important to know because some of the times, like you see here, we got all of our animals in our dining room, right? So they're in close proximity. So when I have all of my female breeders over here releasing pheromones, whether it's from them in the beginning or once they're getting close to laying eggs, all of those things are going out. It seems like those male ball pythons stop feeding. And so I'll pull out one that's actually stopping for me right now and this is kai and he is a breeder for us 
And Kai here is a pastel hypo head desert ghost. And he still has really good body weight. He's over 1,100 grams. So that's the thing that I think that as a new breeder that I really learned, go ahead and fatten them up outside of the breeding season. And then when they stop, you don't have to worry about it as much. Just still have to keep weighing them, making sure they're not losing too much. Like even now as he's moving, he's probably not even thinking about food. He's thinking about where are the women at. He's not thinking about food. He's only thinking about sex. What are some strategies that you can use just to kind of slow all of this down? Well, the first thing you can do is keep your temperature ranges, you know, keep your ambient room temperatures about 77 degrees if you can, no lower than 75. So that's a pretty good comfortable range for most people that keep reptiles. Now keep that hot spot about 88 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And I think that's about 31 and a half to 32 degrees Celsius. Um, and likewise, try to keep that room or that enclosure or that tub anywhere from like 65 to maybe 70 percent humidity i know that might be a little bit hard to do but that can be done with just some misting um weekly misting or make sure they have a water dish or something like that but you also want to limit the amount of time that you're holding them and i know that's hard because we really try to provide enrichment for our animals but during the breeding season you know we really should I'm guessing, you know, and this is all, you know, this is all learning as a new breeder, right? And I'm just sharing it with you that we should hold off on holding our males if we're pairing them up, right? Because anytime we put them with them, it's still stressful for them because it's not something that they do in their normal life. The testosterone has them doing something that they normally wouldn't do. So they're kind of like thinking with their other brain. I mean, literally, they're thinking with their other brain because otherwise they will be eating, right? Another thing would be to keep their enclosures clean. So um, I got this from Godfather's uh, Exotics. And what he shared with me, what Jim shared with me, was that he keeps all of his pythons, his male ball pythons on paper. And he says that way he can make sure that it's clean and it's sterile. Every time he pairs them up, he cleans them. He cleans their enclosures back out. And to me, that, that sounds great. So now we keep all of our breeder males on paper. I did find that a smaller prey size helps which gets us right into the next subject. Last season, we had success feeding jumbo mice, jumbo frozen thawed mice to all of our adult males. They were loving it. They were like, oh yeah, we're great. But this season, something changed. And so because they are stressed out and their testosterone level is high, you don't want to give them their normal size prey item. So if they're on a wean rat, you might just want to feed them a rat pup or an adult mouse. I mean, something is better than nothing in this case. And if you can keep that going with them, then that can help. Also, you want to make sure that you might want to feed them a little bit later in the day, maybe later at night. Um, that's when ball pythons are typically active. So if we can hit that time where they have that peak amount of activity, then we probably can win a lot more than lose in that situation. And I like to always fair balance this stuff because, you know, if you're like me, you're not doing this full time. You go to work and when you come home, a big chunk of your day is gone and you got time with the kids, you got time with your spouse, um, your friends and things like that. So you're trying to squeeze out as much time of the day as you can. But this brings up a very important point. Like when you get home, don't be frustrated with your ball pythons not eating because this is something that's 100% natural for them. But more importantly, Let's let's be mindful of this. So if they lose more than 10 percent or 15 percent of their body weight during a season, let's stop breeding them. Right. Because then there is a different issue going on with the animal that's causing them stress to lose so much weight. Now, they shouldn't be breeding continually for 12 months. Right. So typically you could probably pair your males up for five months and then do something to get them back on food. But if they lose 10 to 15 percent. What I found as a new breeder, um, having lost some animals from different reasons last year, I don't want to lose another animal. So what I'm doing is like that's the that's the, the, the floor or the ceiling, depending on how you look at it. If they lose more than 10 to 15 percent of body weight, breeding is over with for them. And I know that sucks, but I'd rather save my animal than to breed my animal. So and I'm breeding towards projects, but I just can't go through that, you know, having my animals perish on me for something that I am doing. So 
that's just one one little uh, tip that I'm I'm going with to just charge those monthly weights, and then if they lose more than ten to fifteen percent, they just it's it's over with, bro. It's just over with. Solutions, tips. This is what I think, and you guys let me know what you feel. So the best thing to do is like, so we're moving in a couple of months. We're gonna keep our breeder males in a totally separate room than our breeder females. And I'll probably have an air fresh or Febreze air thing or whatever that Glade thing, or, you know, I don't know what it is. Lynn's not behind the camera today, so normally she helps me out, but you know, I don't have no help. But I feel like when the females release the pheromones, they'll be releasing it in an environment that's just females or with the males breeding. And then as soon as they're done, I'm gonna take those breeder males and put them back in their own separate room. Now we don't have as many breeder males. Right now we only have 10. So it's easier to keep them away because they just have one shelf. And as we just make sure that we try to keep one shelf or one rack with just breeder males. And I think that could help. Another thing, and this is what I need your help with. This is what I want you to comment on. So if we think about females, when they're off of food, then we put a male with them and that causes them that, that sexual intercourse or whatever that is, causes their follicles to develop. So what do they do? They actually start eating. That's crazy, right? But at the same time, she starts growing those follicles. She starts releasing those pheromones that makes my boy go crazy. And he's like, I'm not gonna eat. So skip forward on the female. She lays the eggs. And what's the very first thing we do with that female after we remove those eggs safely and we put them in an the incubator. What's the first thing we do? We wash the female. So why are we washing her? Because we know that if that egg smell is still in there, then she will not eat. As long as that egg smell is in there, the female is not eating until those eggs hatch. And that's, that's the way it works, right? That's the way, I guess, mother nature intends on it, is that that female, if she starts eating, she's got to get off those eggs. Those eggs won't make it. So I'm thinking about the males and when we put the males in there and she's releasing these pheromones and now he's rubbing all up against her, he's locking up with her, he's paired up with her, whatever you want to cut, doing the whoopee with her. And then all of a sudden he comes back and he has pheromones all over. He got female cologne, so he can't go back to his girl because the girl gonna be like, who, who you been with? But he goes back into his tub without being washed off you put him in a clean tub. Now he's spreading pheromones around all in there. So my thing that we're trying right now is every time we get a male out that's being paired up, I'm washing him. Yeah, he's getting a bath, man. He's getting a bath, a water bath. I'm letting him soak, get some water. And then I'm lightly putting a little bit of, just a little bit of Dawn dish detergent in there and washing him off to make sure I get it all off of him. Then I'm making sure that everything else in this cage is spanking brand new. I mean, as far as water can do, right? And so I'm thinking that this will help them. Um, I don't know if any of you have already seen this. Again, I'm new to this. This is only our, this, I guess, the end of our second season breeding because we're going to get eggs afterwards, right? So that's what I'm really wanting you guys to let me know is, have you tried this? What are your thoughts on this? And, you know, just so that we can figure out how to get these guys to eat. I can't lose no more hair. So... You know, all I got is gray on the end right here. So, you know, if you guys can let me know in your comments, I'd really appreciate it. I think someone else in the community would appreciate it as well. Um, but hey, that's what I got, guys. Um, sorry I didn't have another solution, but, you know, to summarize, smaller prey items, less handling, keep those conditions constant, clean, um, possibly a separate room. And then what are your thoughts on washing the male ball pythons when we remove them from their breeding exercise or their breeding jaunt or experience their outing with the female. If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe, share it with someone that you think might need it. Or if it's in a forum, it might be something that somebody could actually use in a forum. Me, myself, I'm going to get more active in a forum and just see what happens. But enjoy that time that you spend with your reptiles and, you know, let's try to get better at what we do. And man, just cherish that time that you got your family. If you got family around you right now, you're a blessed man. I mean, you are really a blessed man. If you got your kids around you all the time, your grandparents, your parents, your wife, your aunts, your uncles, hey, man, give them a hug. Give them a kiss on the cheek if you got to.
because this time is definitely short. Hey, but thanks for watching, guys.